Dit is papa Alfa 0, Eco Tingo. Ik kom voor de Daily Minutes met een nieuwsupdate voor vandaag. Dat is de bulletin van zaterdag. As always in weekends, our bulletin will be in English. We have the propagation news of the RSGB and some other additional news. And next to that we have some Morse code, words and an SSTV image in PD90. This is GB2RS, the news broadcasting service of the Radio Society of Great Britain. It comes to you from G4NJH in Nottingham. You can find the text on the RSGB's own website. Now for the radio propagation report compiled by G0KYAG3 Wiley and G4BAO. Last week was a mixed bag in terms of HF propagation. The solar flux index hovered around the 80 mark and the K index was poor at the weekend, although a little more settled later in the week. Last weekend saw the CW leg of CQ worldwide and the consensus was that con- were conditions were not brilliant. We said that 20 metres and 15 metres would be the optimum HF bands with occasional 10 metre openings. This turned out to be true as Roger G3LDI proved by only working 67 stations on 10 metres in 48 hours. Roger said that they were mostly weak and watery European contacts despite using three element step IR. The days of extensive DX openings on 10 metres may last be behind us for a few years. Meanwhile, back to the sun, there have been three visible sunspot groups with Region 2615 generating M-class solar flares, so watch out for potential coronal mass ejections and flare-induced blackouts or sudden ionospheric disturbances. As we head into December, now is the best time for the low bands, especially top band and 80 metres. You may find that the evening critical frequency drops so much that 40 metres struggles to open to the exit times with a typical critical frequency of around 3 MHz at 2000 hours, even 80 meters may struggle at distances less than 300 to 400 kilometers. Unfortunately, geomagnetic conditions are also predicted to be unsettled from the 7th of December to the 11th due to recurrent coronal hole effects. VHF and up, high pressure will continue to provide slightly improved tropo conditions on the VHF UHF bands at the beginning of the week. But there's likely to be a slow decline later as pressure falls to the north of Britain. Although lift conditions could affect much of the country at first, these will become confined to the south by midweek and all gone soon after. Don't forget to try the multi-mode part of the bands with CW or SSB and do call CQ and announce your activity in advance on email reflectors, DX chat such as ON4KST.info and the social media are the best be- uh, 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 if the bands seem quiet. The moon is at lowest declination today and path losses are still high, but declination goes positive late on Thursday the 8th and losses are lower. Look out for gigahertz band DME operation from Jericho from that day until the 13th of December by E44QX and E44HP. The big Geminid shower is... A meteor shower is now only a week away. The zenithal hourly rate for this shower is up to 120 metres per hour, which is so it's a really good one. We'll have more information next week as to the best times to operate. Look at dl1dbc.net for Virgo, Virgo Ajaffa real-time meteor tracking web page that may help you. Unfortunately, it doesn't run on all browsers, so you may have to try more than one before you get it to work. And that's it for this week from the Propagation Team. Goran, SM7DLK, and Toraleif, SM6YOR, report that the Swedish Post and Telecom Regulator has been issuing temporary six-month experimental licences for 5351.5 to 5366.5 kHz with 15 watts EIRP. This replaces the previous four 3 kHz segments used in past years, all of which have now expired. There's still no decision on whether Post and Telecom will implement the WRC15 recommendation in their national ban plan. It's considered unlikely to happen before January 2018 or until a new national ban plan is released. The origins of Silicon Valley spring from the early efforts of amateur radio enthusiasts, according to a newly released video. Paul Wesling, KM6LH, tells of the interesting events in San Francisco early in the 20th century, as early radio was being developed and now Ham's designed, how Ham's designed new devices and equipment to address steamship traffic plying the Pacific Ocean. Their efforts before World War II, including extending the state-of-the-art 
into microwave region, into the microwave region, form the basis of what became Silicon Valley. The video is on YouTube and can be found at tinyurl.com forward slash gb2rs hyphen figures 1204. Starting in the new year, some significant changes are being made to RSGB contests. This is a result of the presidential review of contesting and detailed consultation with the contest community. A summary of the changes is in the January edition of RADCOM, which should start arriving with RSGB members from Wednesday onwards. The RSGB contest committee website, www.rsgbcc.org, is in the process of being updated to reflect the changes. Foundations of Amateur Radio. Let me start completely off topic today with a thank you for emails and other expressions of concern regarding the demise of the bearing last week from my messy desk. I did not lose my marbles other than the ball bearings in the disposed item and my sanity is as intact as it ever was. I'm also asked for photos of the messy desk and as a concession to that I'll use a photo of the ball bearing for the podcast edition this week. How am I able to produce a photo of the disposed ball bearing? Truth be told, it's in the bin. The bin is in my office, but it wasn't emptied last week since there was so little inside. So the ball bearing lives. Until Tuesday, when the bin will surely be emptied. Now, on to amateur radio matters, since that's why I'm here. Though, based on your emails, I'm not quite yet sure why you're here. Yesterday, a good friend of mine, who tragically has yet to see the light and become a licensed amateur, came to me with a non-functioning antenna. He had purchased a so-called ground-independent monopole, suitable for 380 to 520 megahertz. You get no points for guessing that this was to be used for a CB installation on his vehicle. When you read the accompanying material, this magical antenna has a 4 dB improvement when compared to a three-wave whip in the center of a metal roof. But then when you look at the footnote, it talks about a 4 dB improvement over a quarter wave whip. But patent tests only deliver a 2 to 2.5 dB actual gain. I can hear you groaning from here. It leads me to several observations. As a licensed amateur, you should be able to already spot holes as wide as a semi-trailer in those few statements. As amateurs, we are often dismissive of the CB community. But how can they be held to account if manufacturers publish what looks to me like drivel of the highest order? The design itself is curious. There appears to be a loading coil in the base. The center of the coax is trimmed to a specified length and inserted through the coil. An electrical continuity exists between the radiating element and the coax shield. After spending some time troubleshooting the installation, I determined that the PL259 connector at the end wasn't actually soldered to the coax. So we fixed that. Using my antenna analyzer, we trimmed the vertical as specified, a couple of millimeters at a time, but it wasn't setting the world on fire with the updated SWR charts I was generating. We stopped trimming when we got close, since cutting off length is easy, cutting on length not so much. I then reread the instructions and queried the length of the trimmed bit of inner coax that was inserted into the loading coil, and found out that it was about a centimeter too long. Fingers crossed we trimmed that to length and the SWR chart improved. It still didn't set the world on fire, but at least the SWR wasn't 8 to 1 on CB channel 40. Of course I've urged my friend to get an amateur license, but that's ultimately their own choice. What I took away from the experience is that even a very basic amateur license like the one I hold is sufficient to understand better what is going on and to be able to begin the process of troubleshooting antenna installations. I thought I understood that this antenna was basically a vertical dipole, but at the moment I'm not sure, and I'm wondering if the loading coil is actually a matching circuit, and I wonder why the coax shield and the radiator are connected to each other. I'm sure the antenna is designed with the best intentions, and I'm moderately confident that it works as intended. Now all we need to do is train the marketing department to talk to the engineering department before publishing their materials. For me the takeaway is twofold. Don't blame a CB for their lack of knowledge, sometimes the manufacturer is to blame. The other takeaway is that with basic understanding of amateur radio, you can help your fellow radio operator. Now, where on my desk is that thing I was looking for? I'm Ono, Victor Kilo 6, Foxtrot, Lima, Alpha, Bravo.
Ik wou graag even de groeten doen aan PD0HOFPA1EEOPE1BRJON3EVB PA1OKZPE1CHL PD1ALO PA3FKMXPA1JAL PE1JLZ Ja, nou is het wel genoeg. Daily Minutes zijn dagelijks vanaf ongeveer 1900 uur te beluisteren via PI2NOS. De uitzending wordt een dag later om half elf s ochtends herhaald. Dit is Papa Alpha 0 Eco Tango Eco. Lodewijk, zeg nou nog eens Tesla als je dat wilt.